Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to cover all basic commands of the Unix operating system. So all these commands and the commands that you need to know when you want to get started in Unix programming. So I'm going to use a Kali Linux operating system, which is a categorized as a Unix operating system. Let's get started. If you've not yet installed the OS in, in the virtual box and you want to install, I will link a video down in the description. You can check it out. Install the, the, the operating system and then come back. I have installed uh, Kalinux operating system in a virtual box. So I'm going to launch the virtual box. I'm going to start the operating system. Okay, now the operating system is fully booted. To enable full screen, you can navigate to the view and then full screen mode. It will bring up this pop-up, just click switch. And it will switch to a full screen mode. And actually, someone cannot know that you are using the operating system in a virtual box. So after the operating system uh, is fully booted up, open the terminal. So in the Unix or Linux environment, we will mostly work with the text commands. So the first command you need to do is the OMI, OMI command. So the OMI command prints the name of the currently logged in user uh, in the operating system. For example, this uh, uh, the username is Caleb, so it has printed out Caleb. So the next command you need to know is the which command. So the which command prints the the path name of a specific command. For example, I want to know where the where my command is located. So just type which which my my and it will uh, print the the path of the where my command, which is the USR the bin and then where my and. Now the next command is the date command. If you want to print out the date, just type date and it will print out the current date and time and your, your, your time zone. And the next command is the calendar. To print out the calendar, just type CAL and it will print the calendar of the current month. So to print the calendar of the, the a whole year, just type CAL and then for example 2022 and it will print out the calendar of the whole year also you can for example you want to print the calendar of 1955 just type cal 1955 it has printed the calendar for 1955 and a very a very nice feature is that you can print a calendar to a specific text file so i'm going to show you that uh, uh, in, in uh, later on in the video so the next command is is a command which is used to change the login shell which is the chsh command so this command is used to change the shell that is used to to log into the computer so if i enter my password i will be able to change the login shell between the sh shell the bash shell or the c shell but right now i don't want to change so to abort just uh, press ctrl and c it will abort the the current uh, the continuing command so the next command you need to know is the clear command so the clear command clears the terminal for example as you can see i've entered 
have uh, entered some commands and it has displayed results. So if I use the clear command, it will remove everything from the terminal and it will be clean uh, as new. So the next command is the password command. So this is the command that is used to change the password. Now, as you have seen it, it's asking me for my current password. So for example, let me enter my current password. It will prompt me to enter a new password. For example, let me enter a new password and then confirm. So, unfortunately, it, uh, it's telling me to choose a longer password. So let me choose a longer password. So the password has been updated successfully. So this is a very easy and fast way to change or to update your password. So the next command you need to know is the sleep command. So the sleep command is a command that is used to delay, to delay the terminal or to make the terminal do nothing for a specific amount of time. So if I, I type sleep, uh, sleep uh, three, I'm telling the terminal to sleep for three seconds. So it will it will be in a standstill for three seconds and then it will uh, terminate. Let's say sleep for 15 seconds. So it will remain in this con uh, in this uh, state for 15 seconds. To terminate, just use the control and C command. It will terminate the continuing process. So the next command is the apropos command. So the apropos command is a command that is used to to search for specific strings or commands in the in the documentation page. For example, I want to search for the name sleep in the documentation page. Let's say apropos. For example, uh, the name is sleep. Sleep. It will display all instances of the name sleep in, in the documentation page. Also, the next command is the man, man command. So the man command is the command that you will want to use when you want to know when you want to know what a specific command does. If you are unsure what a specific command is supposed to do, use the man command. For example, I want to know what the sleep command is supposed to do. Just type man and then sleep. So it will open this interface. So as you can see, sleep delays uh, for a specific amount of time, exactly as uh, you saw like that. That's in the description, which you can read to get a better understanding. And also, if uh, there are many variants of the command, it will also uh, display them right here. So to exit this uh, interface, just press Q and it will exit from the interface. So the next command is the history command. So the history command is used to display a list of recently used commands. For example, if I type history, it will display all the commands that I've ever used all the commands that I've ever used in this uh, uh, in this uh, specific account. So to be more specific, for example, to display the last 10 commands, type a string, then tell me. It will display the last 10 commands that you used. Okay, now let's look at the commands that can be used to shut down the computer. So the first command we have is the reboot command. So the reboot command is supposed, supposed to restart the computer. As you can see, it has restarted the virtual machine.
so the system is fully restarted so the next command is the power off command so I'm, I'm not going to execute the command because it will power off the next command is the alt command so the alt command immediately uh, shuts down it automatically shuts down the computer so it, it does not follow the 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 normal procedure of powering of a computer it, it shuts it shuts it down automatically so the next command is the pwd command so this command uh, prints the working directory the directory that you are using at the moment so let's uh, look at the how we how to work with files in unix operating system so the first thing is to know the the, the folder that you are working with at the moment which is the pwd command as i've told you so the next command is the ls command so the ls command it lists all uh, all contents of the the, the folder that you are working with so all these uh, files and folders are present in the Caleb directory. So if, for example, I want uh, I want to change my working directory to a different directory, I use the cd command. For example, cd. Let's move. Let's uh, let me select the downloads. So I'm working with the downloads folder. So for me to return to the to the previous folder, I use the same CD. Now right here, I will have to specify the old path. Home, home is the root folder, and then Caleb, and then just like that. So I've returned to the previous folder. Also, I can um, move to the desktop, for example, CD desktop. Also know that uh, the directory names are case sensitive. So for example, the name desktop or downloads, it has to start with the capital letter. So I've changed my working directory to the desktop. So the desktop is right here. We can see the changes we make very easily. So the first command is how to create a, a directory or a folder. To create a directory, you use the mkdir command. So for let me create a directory called uh, new dir and then enter as you can see this directory has popped up right here new directory dot dir so for me to start working with this directory i can use i use the command cd new dir now i'm working inside this directory let me open the directory. As you can see, the directory is empty. Now let me create uh, another uh, a directory inside this directory. MKDIR new folder. New folder. As you can see, a folder has popped up in there. So to create a file, use the touch command. For example, I want to use I want to create a text file. Use the touch touch new dot txt txt. As you can see, also a text file has appeared right there. So that's how you create a file and a folder. For example, if I want to create uh, another another file inside the new folder so cd new folder cd new folder it will open the new folder and then let me open the new folder let me use the touch command touch new file dot txt that's created a new file so the next thing is how to delete a file and the folder so to de to delete a, a file, you use the rm rm command. So let me create a, let me create a directory. 
Now let me delete this file and this directory. Use the rm uh, new file dot txt the exact name. As you can see, it's deleted. Also rm new. Oh, okay. The to delete the directory use the rmdir. RMDIR is the one that is used to delete a directory. RMDIR new. So as you can see, it has deleted the directory. So to go back to the root directory, cd specify the path home and then column. We've gone back to the to the column directory. So for example, I want to to come here back to the to come directly to the new folder directory cd home caleb and then desktop desktop make sure they they this capital because it's case sensitive caleb and then we have a new dir new dir and then new folder New folder. So we've come back to this new folder. We can create the directory new, and it will pop up, pop up right here. So those are the basics of working with files. Now le let's let's go back to the to the home directory. Let actually let's go back to the desktop. The DS to the capital. So let's. Uh, I'm going to show now how to copy files from one uh, folder to another. So right here we have two folders. We have the the scripts folder and then the new DIR folder. The scripts folder is uh, as the arith.sh which is a script which is a, a script file while the new dir is empty does not have any uh, actually it has uh, two items so we're going to copy the arith.sh from the scripts file to the new dir file so to do that we use the command uh, called the cp cp which is used to copy so cp defend the directory so the, the directory is on caleb and then desktop desktop and then just a, a space and then define a desktop and scripts scripts uh, folder scripts and then uh, arith dot sh Okay, now let's uh, define the. Let's define. Let's define the. Put a space. Let's define where we want the file to be copied to. So it's the same home, Caleb, desktop. Now the folder is new, dir. Dir. UDIR. just like that so and then click enter after you click enter now when i come back to the scripts to the scripts folder as you can see the it's still there and then when i come to the new dir also the arith dot the sh is uh, is there so it has copied this uh, ar arithmetic file from the scripts folder to the new dir folder so now let's look at the move command which is used to move uh, from one uh, folder to another now let's move the the arith file from the scripts folder to the test folder so mv mv is the command that is to move also on caleb desktop 
yeah, scripts scripts arith.sh sh space now the destination the destination is home caleb also desktop uh, actually let's say okay scripts uh, scripts scripts and then enter well, let's wait for it to respond Okay, so we use the same directory. So let me change. Uh, I forgot. So it's test. It's the test folder, and then enter. So when I, I move to the test folder, the are the file is right here. But when I go to the scripts folder, uh, the the shell file is not there because it, it has been moved to the test to the test uh, folder so that's the that's how to copy and move items from uh, one uh, folder to another so the next command we're going to look at is the word count command so the word count, the word count command is used to count the number of words characters and lines in a, in a particular document so for example you want to know the number of uh, the number of lines in a particular document so you just type wc fn l for example that's for the line and then because we're in the, we're in the desktop directory let's for example use the exam script dot sh exam script dot sh so it the exam script.sh has only five lines so to know the the for example the word count just replace the l with a c and then enter so the exam script.sh has 53 characters to know the the number of uh, the number of uh, words use w and then run so it has seven only seven words so that's how you can use the word count command to know the exact number of lanes words and characters in a specific document so also we have the the chmod command which is used to change file permissions the chmod command so for example if you've created a file and you don't want anyone to use it for example because we are in the, in the desktop let's create a file uh, no permission no permission so the uh, the folder is right here no permission and i want to to i, I don't want anyone to access the file so I can use the ch mode 0, 0, 0, 4 times and then no permission no permission so when I try to open this file because it's empty on this location can, cannot be displayed because I've changed the permission such that no one can this no one can use uh, or display or view without me reversing the permission restriction. So there are many variants of the ch mode command which you can find on which you can find online, such as restricting the users they can only view but they cannot modify in any way or execute. So this is just an explanation of the command and how it works. So the next command that is uh, quite 
Nace is the is the the command groupings. So, for example, you want to execute many commands and export them as one file. You use the command groupings. So, you use a bracket. For example, I want to export the calendar for 2022. Yes, cal 2022. And uh, use a full uh, semicolon and export calendar for 2030 a uh, 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 colon and then i want to export for example uh, uh, for example history my 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 last 10 commands history 10 and then close and then use this uh, greater than sign, which is now an uh, an assignment. Now let's uh, let's create a text file. For example, out dot txt, and then enter. So it will create this out dot txt file, which contains the content of all the output of all these commands. Instead of printing them out to the terminal. It saves them in this text file. So when I open this text file, now it has the contents of all those commands. It has the calendar of 2022, the calendar of 2030, and it has my last 10 executed commands. So that's uh, also a very important uh, command when you want to to save easily contents of your commands to a specific uh, text file for example you want to print or uh, something like that so so guys those are the the basic commands of, uh, of of unix or linux operating system these are the uh, commands that will start will uh, will start your journey in the uh, in the linux world so I've I've tried uh, to cover majority of the of the commands. So if you feel that I've uh, left out some commands, you can you can look for them online and try them out. But I've given you quite a good head start. So thanks guys for watching the video. If the video was of help, consider liking the video and subscribe if uh, you like this type of content. So. The next video I'm going to do about uh, shell scripting, about writing scripts that uh, that run in the in the Unix environment. So subscribe uh, to stay tuned for the same. So thanks for watching, guys, and.